Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be showing off something that I did in my Bloons Tower Defense project, which seems simple on the surface, but the way I'm accomplishing it, I think is pretty cool. So basically you'll see that when I hover over the icons for each of these towers that you build, it shows kind of all the stats of the tower, how much it costs and gives it kind of like a little description of each tower. Now the way I'm actually loading this in is by using scriptable objects. And so I'm gonna be showing you how I did that today. So if you didn't catch my previous video, basically I'm recreating the Bloons Tower Defense game. And you'll see that I kind of started with the UI. Let me just kind of show you kind of exactly what I did here. So I literally took a screenshot from the game and then just built my UI on top of this. So everything kind of lines up perfectly. You know, all the text is exactly the same. And you'll see that um, I now actually kind of have this functional here. And so you can check out that previous video if you wanna learn all the reasons why I'm doing this particular project. But one of the reasons is that I want to show you some kind of cool Unity things along the way. And so today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about scriptable objects and how powerful they are. But before we get started, I'd just like to say if you find this video helpful and you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the other videos in the series that I'm doing. And one more thing real quick, if you are watching this in the month of September 2020, I have a special surprise for you because I partnered with the Unity Asset Store in their back to school promotion. So basically if you enter the code TURBO15 at checkout, that's good for 15% off your entire order um, of anything off the Unity Asset Store. So feel free to check out the description for a little bit more information on that. So first things first, I think I should just give a quick overview of what scriptable objects are. So basically these are instances of scriptable objects. So I've created this scriptable object called Tower Information. You can see that's the name of the script right here. And a scriptable object is essentially a good place where you can store data. It's really nice because it's persistent, so it'll persist between different scenes. And it's also persistent if you were able to make any modifications to it during play mode mode and then you exit out of play mode, all your changes are going to stay saved. You know, a lot of times when you're messing around with values within the inspector, they'll revert to what they were before you entered play mode. So that's not the case with scriptable objects. Some other advantages is they're easily serializable, so you can save them very easily. And they're also interchangeable, which is one thing that I'm going to be showing you today is how we can kind of swap in and out these different serializable objects so we can display the different information on the screen. So on these scriptable object instances, you'll see that I've kind of defined different values for each tower. You know, how much it costs, what the speed is, and what the description is, of course, what the tower name is. So when you want to create an instance of a scriptable object, basically I've created this context menu for tower information here, and I'll show you how to do this when we get to the code but we can click on this and then we can create a new tower information. So the one that we still need to add in is of course the super monkey. And then here we can just go ahead and populate the name and the cost as well as the speed. And then I'll go ahead and paste in a description here. So you'll see that creating these new scriptable objects is extremely quick once you have everything set up. All right, so here's my scriptable object class. Basically it's a public class called tower information and it inherits from scriptable object as opposed to mono behavior or something else. And then this attribute that we put above it, this create asset menu, this is basically how we can have it so when we right click within the hierarchy, we can create new instances of the scriptable object. So you see that the menu name is set to tower information and the file name is set to tower info. So this is kind of the default file name that comes up when you create this new uh, scriptable object. So then you'll see here for the different values for name, cost, speed, and description, these are all just private serializable fields. And if you want, you can have all these values as public fields, but I kind of did it this way just for an extra layer of security. And then I've included some public properties here, and that's how we can actually access the data on our scriptable object. Right now I have speed set up as an enum, and then it actually returns a string, and that's how we can kind of populate this stuff. Maybe not the best way to do it, but it's just something kind of easy that I threw together for the beginning of this project. So that's basically how to set up the serializable object. Now let me show you how we can actually access the serializable object. So I've created this build towers UI controller, which basically just has a reference to all the text mesh pro text objects for the tower name, cost, speed, and description, as well as uh, the game object for the tower information panel. And so I've created these two functions here. So we have the show tower information, which takes in a tower information type, which is again, that scriptable object. And basically all it does here is it turns on the tower information panel 
And then here's where it actually sets the text values. And you'll see that we're just accessing them by doing tower information dot name, just using that public property there. And then same thing with the cost speed and description, we're just accessing the public properties on them. And then I've also included another public function for hiding the tower information. Basically just, this just blanks out all the text objects and then turns the uh, tower information panel off. So now let me just show you how we can call those show and hide functions. So if we go to the build dart tower button here, you'll see that I've added an event trigger and I've added events for a pointer enter as well as a pointer exit. So basically on pointer enter, we're gonna call this build towers UI controller dot show tower information. And then here we can drag in the scriptable object for the dart tower info. And then on the pointer exit event, we just call hide tower information, which of course doesn't take in any values here. So you'll see when I hit play, when we hover over the dart tower button, it shows all the dart tower information. And then when we move away from it, then it hides all the dart tower information. So show, hide, show, hide. And then you'll see that I have it set up for all these other ones, except the super monkey tower. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So if we go onto the build super monkey button, We'll just go ahead and go to add component and then go ahead and add an event trigger. We'll go ahead and add a new event type and this will be a pointer enter type. Now we can go ahead and hit this plus button to add a new event here. And I'll just bring in my game controllers object and then we'll go to the build towers UI controller and then the show tower information function. Now again, it's asking us to drag in a tower information scriptable object which we have right here. So we can take the super monkey tower info and drop it on right there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add another event type for the pointer exit. And it pre-populates it with the same stuff here. So we can actually just change this to build towers UI controller dot hide tower information. So now when we go ahead and hit play here, you'll see that when we hover over the super monkey tower, it's now showing us the new information here. So again, it's super easy to create these new scriptable objects. And I hope this video kind of showed you how easy it is to like interchange all these scriptable objects so you can display the you know proper information that you want to display. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more kind of bite-sized videos like this where I'm showing off some cool things that I'm doing in my Bloons Tower Defense project along the way. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down in the comment section below. And don't forget to go check out the Unity Asset Store's back to school sale. Make sure you use code TURBO15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Again, check the description for the full terms and conditions on that. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.